let's get it that's right you see the right what's happening people welcome to the channel this is cj writes writer producer theater maker let's talk a little bit about my childhood some funny stuff some funny stuff i grew up on a council estate in birmingham called the lindas estate now if it's no longer there because it's been remodified and it's been i don't want to use the word gentrified but that's probably what has happened but it was an amazing place. I was always outside with my friends kicking balls. So that's pretty much all I did. I was always outside playing football, had a lot of energy. Even though I was quite chubby, I was actually quite fast, which is hilarious, actually. So I grew up in an area where you could have one neighbour one week and then within three weeks they've gone and you've got a new set of neighbours. So I was always meeting new people from all walks of life. And I think that's really helped me to just understand how to get on with people. There were little tiffs here and there and little squabbles, but it's all character building. And especially youngsters playing football, emotions can get high and all them things there. So it was definitely an experience. And I always look back on those people that, that I grew up with. And those are the character voices I have in my head when I'm writing my plays a lot of the time. You can use people to inspire your character voices and inspire the stories that you write. And I very much do draw on the people that I met on the Lindas estate. So I very much channeled my creativity at that time into sports. I didn't really do much with the arts. When I was a child, it was very much just sports, sports, sports. I always wanted to just play football and just run. So I very much channeled my creativity into sports and art as well. I think I, you know, I really enjoyed those subjects at, at school, PE and art. They came very naturally to me. And storytelling did as well, but it wasn't something that I discovered as a gift until probably I got to secondary school. I always had to do something because there was always that peer pressure to hang around the shops. And I wasn't even allowed actually to cross the road. And then you had the rest of the estate which was all on the other side. So my friends from school were all over the other side, but my parents were basically like, no, you just, you're gonna stay in this area. And we used to call it the washyard. So it was the place where people were supposed to hang their clothes, but we just ended up playing football in there. We lived in a masonette, and I think the whole masonette just started to realize actually that's a safe space for them to be relatively safe space for them to be so let's just let them play football in there and the great thing was there were two poles at either end the one end you had poles that you could turn them into goals and then the other end would have two poles that would look like goal posts as well so you ended up playing on a diagonal <laughs> which is why I was always quite good at curling because I basically grew up having to curl every single shot because we were playing on a diagonal so yeah, that, that was childhood really. It was very much just being outside. I was always the type of student to, to go against the grain. There's one particular story I have in mind, which, which I always share. And so essentially the whole school were doing plays about World War II. And I just felt like everybody else's classes had a lot of energy and they were fun and exciting. I think this was the first experience now that I had a directorial eye and like I knew what was funny and what was entertaining and what was nice to watch and so all the classes were doing this uh, school show and they everyone had to do their own individual thing and I felt like all the classes were great and then it came to us and I just felt like it was dry and we were reading from paper and actually my teacher I don't know I haven't seen my teacher since this point since this incident that I'm going to talk about but if anybody knows of Miss Wharton, if she's still teaching, then I'd love her to, to I'd love to uh, check in with her and see how she's doing. But essentially, we were all reading from paper, and I felt like ours was boring, and everybody else's was really good. So anyway, it was our time to go up and do our class assembly, and everyone, it was okay. It was it was fine. We did it, and round of applause. And I basically nudged my friend. And I said to her, I said, look, I felt like that was dry. What What do you reckon if I go up there to do and just do Michael Jackson? Are you going to back me? Like, would you back me if I did that? And she was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she nudged her friend and she was like, yeah, ah, oh, 
CJ's gonna go up there and do Michael Jackson. Would you like cheer him on if he does it? And they were like, yeah, 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 go and do your thing, man. So I was like, you know what? Whether they said yes or no, I was still gonna go up and do it anyway. But it was good to, to know that people were gonna back me through it. So I was like, you know what, I'm doing this. So I went out. Our assembly was done, bear in mind. The whole assembly, everything was done. We were supposed to be going to, to break time or, or going back to our classroom at this point. So I was like, right, I'm doing this. It's now or never, it's make or break. <laughs> so I ran out at the front of the school and I said, does anybody like Michael Jackson up in here? <laughs> I just started going for it. Everybody was cheering. Well, when I say everybody, the kids at the front, they were all cheering like, yeah, yeah. And I was moonwalking up and down, up and down. And I saw a couple of the class teachers laughing and looking at my class teacher. Now, I thought that that was encouragement, so I just kept going. And obviously, I know that the teachers were laughing because they knew this wasn't supposed to happen because obviously we're doing an assembly about World War II. Michael Jackson wasn't around in World War II. So anyway, I've done this and I look back anyway and the people that said they were going to back me were not backing me because obviously they backed out and I wasn't happy about that. So anyway, I go back to the classroom and I'm there, I'm all proud, sitting at the table like, yeah man, like, I've done my thing. It's break time and everybody gets up, I'm ready to get up, teacher says, hold on CJ, not you. So now I'm thinking she's gonna lay into me. She's gonna phone my parents. And, and the thing is, I wasn't even naughty in school. I was just one of those that would be a little bit cheeky here and there, but it wouldn't be anything crazy. I wasn't trying to miss break time for nobody. You know when they put those little red marks on, on the board next to your name? I would get one of those and you wouldn't hear me for the rest of the day. So anyway, she keeps me in. She's like, CJ, you cannot just do what you want. We had a whole assembly planned and you've just gone up there and ruined it. I'm thinking, here we go, she's gonna phone my parents. So on the way home, I'm kind of bricking it a little bit. I get home, parents are fine, they didn't know anything. So I'm like, that's a bit weird, why didn't she phone my parents? Basically the next day, I go into school and the same teacher says, oh CJ, you were just the person I was looking for. And I was like, okay that's a bit of a different tune than we left on so realized that they were doing a, a school show oliver twist and she was like cj i want you to audition for this show i hadn't done any performance or anything like that before so i was like okay well fine so i auditioned for it and i didn't get any of the lead roles or anything like that so i was a little bit annoyed at that and then she was like i'm gonna give you a special role so i ended up playing my school head teacher and uh, I was doing like a comedy role where I could dance and just have fun really. And when people came and watched the, the school show, they actually really enjoyed my performance. You know, I was, like I mentioned before, I was quite chubby and small. So anything I did probably look funny, but I think possibly at that point, it was about being more of a hobby rather than actually being a career choice. But it was definitely something that if that teacher had not channeled my enthusiasm because i know other teachers in that similar situation they may have just shouted at me told parents and then you get grounded and then any experience of the arts you have after that is kind of skewed because you're like oh well last time i did that i got into trouble and it could really stunt a child's confidence so i think yes what i did was wrong obviously i shouldn't have went up there and, and done that because it was just totally out of line and had nothing to do with anything that we were doing however i think that was great teaching and, and the sign of a great educator because she actually identified. I think he's just got a lot of energy and we need to push him into something creative so we can use that. Now when I work with children in schools, when I see that they might be a little bit chatty or noisy, the arts would really be helpful for them. And it's about changing the stigma of the arts as something quite highbrow to something that is actually for the community and for people like myself growing up that really needed it. And so that story is really integral to my development. I do thank that teacher for what she did. That's it from me for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please drop it a like and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or comments, I'd love to hear them in the section below. Peace and love, see you next time.